Introduction to data flow diagrams, DFDs, the difference between level zero and level one DFDs. Now, a data flow diagram is used to graphically model systems. The diagrams show the input of data from various external elements, which are known as external entities, into a system, the transformation of data into information by the system through the system's processes, which is visible at a level one level only, and then the return or display of processed information back to either the same or a completely different external entity in line with the system's purpose. So we use them obviously to get a gauging of how a system will work and essentially how these external components interact with the system, what they put in and then what they get out as a result. So firstly, we'll take a look at a level zero DFD and these uh, forms of data flow diagrams give an overview of an entire system. And essentially it's context and for this reason, the diagram is often known as a context diagram. With these diagrams, we often start off with a big circle in the middle of our actual diagram. And this circle, and we only ever have one at a level zero level, represents the entire system. It is a process that represents the whole system. So it's whatever you want to name the system, followed by system traditionally. Then from here, we add the external entities that will be interacting with the system, showing what data they enter into the system and what information they're getting out of the system in trying to get a bit of an understanding of how the system works. Essentially, it's context. Sometimes one entity might be the one putting the data in and then another entity that is separate reads that data after processing as a different form of information and then it may return something for through a different purpose of the system. So it's about identifying how these different external entities are interacting with the system, what they're putting in and what they're getting out of it. So this is level zero, then obviously the next level is a level one data flow diagram. And here we go into greater detail into the data flow diagram. Essentially that single circle that we had at the center of our level zero now gets exploded into multiple processes, sub processes of the system, gradually changing the information in different ways in order to create an expected outcome for an external entity. So our diagram will look something like this now. An external entity enters data into the system and it might go through three different processes before information was returned back to the same external entity in this system's context. Now, we also have a new type of symbol in this diagram as well, known as a data store, okay, which represent locations where data is sent to and retrieved from, such as a specific database. Okay, they're represented by a three-sided rectangle. So that's not an error in my picture. It's not meant to be a square and I'm missing the side. It actually is a three-sided rectangle representing that data store. So you can see there in my process three, whatever's happening at that stage is referring to data stored on a database. And then after it's processed, new information with that database data, it is then updating it and then storing it back to that database for in a new updated version before information is potentially set back to my external entity. So the whole key here is in level one that we've exploded our system into its sub processes and we can see how data is changing through its flow throughout my system. Okay, and as said, the data store being an important part of that for saving and retrieving data from. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of data flow diagrams and essentially two of the first levels of data flow diagrams. Level zero, which gives a nice contextual view of the system, showing the, the system as a whole unit, okay, and how in, uh, external entities interact with the system, what they put in and what they get it out. And then moving into the level one DFD, where that system is then broken into its sub processes, and we can gradually see how data is changed by each process within the system before providing information back to an external entity, and obviously using a data store as a place for sending information to and from for later use. Um, there are more levels to DFDs, but these are the ones mainly done at stage six computing within high schools, but it does go into further and deeper versions there too, but I guess there for another video. But I hope it's given you an understanding of the basic levels of a data flow diagram.